All right, guys, it's hard to believe it, but this is our last mini lesson together in fourth grade. I cannot tell you how proud I am of the hard work you have been putting into your e-learning, your dedication, the support of your families has been awesome. And I can't wait to hopefully see you all Thursday during the parade. And then hopefully even Friday when I come to bring you your surprises. I miss you guys terribly, and I just can't wait for fifth grade, and I know a couple of you are moving schools, and we're going to miss you so much, but I just can't wait to see you all again in fifth grade and give you a hug. You heard that right. I will give you a hug if you want it. So today, we're doing the last bit of our math skills for fourth grade, a bit of review. These skills all have to do with data and analysis, and what that really means is we're going to be looking at some graphs, and then we're going to do some mean, median, mode, and range. Okay? So let's get started. Here we have a table. So one of the skills we need to be able to do as a mathematician is read a table. So it says Kristen's Candies has been studying how much chocolate people have been eating in different countries. So what we have over here in this table, these are actually countries. Um, they're all European countries, so they're not super close to us. They're across the Atlantic Ocean. And what they've been doing here is been looking at their candy sales for two particular years, 2002 and 2005. So the first question says, how much total chocolate was consumed in Denmark? So to answer that question, we need to zoom in on Denmark. I noticed that there were nine kilograms in 2002 plus eight kilograms in 2005. And I know if I'm doing the total, that means put them together. So I'm gonna put nine and eight together, which means I'm gonna add, and I'm gonna get 17 kilograms. Now notice, I did not just write 17 kilograms on the line. I show my work, because remember, as we move forward as a mathematician, you have to be able to explain what you did. It's not just about a correct answer anymore. It's explaining your thinking. And don't forget those units. And if you're wondering where I got kilogram, right up there in the table. All right, how much total chocolate was consumed in 2002? So I need to look at all of the 2002 ones. And since I noticed there's five numbers, I'm actually going to do my work over here because I need a little bit of space. So I have 11 kilograms, 9 eight, three, and 10. Now, one strategy you can do is because some of these are two digit numbers, you can go put placeholders if that helps you line things up. Again, that's a strategy. We use the strategies that help us learn best. And then we're gonna add them up because again, it said total. I'm actually gonna shrink this down a little bit so I have some room, guys, sorry about that. Okay, I'm gonna start with the ones column. I'm gonna start with one plus nine because I already know that's 10 and 10 is pretty easy for me to add to any other number. So then I have one plus nine is 10, 10 plus eight is 18, and then I need to add three more. So 19, 20, 21, my one goes down, I carry my two. Now I'm gonna add my tens, two plus one plus one, and I know that's four. So my answer is 41, kilograms. Again, make sure you're labeling when you're talking about graphs, charts, and tables because they're made for a variety of things. Okay, which country or countries consumed the most chocolate altogether? This one gets a little tricky. I'm going to actually shrink my work down over here because I have to figure out what each country had altogether. So what that means is, sorry about that, what that means is I need to add all of the country's totals together. So I'm going to do that real simply on this table right here. So I know 11 plus 10 is 21. I know 9 plus 8 is 17. I know 8 plus 11 is 19. I know 3 plus 4 is 7. And I know 10 plus 11 is 21 as well. So when I look at that, I can clearly see 21 is the biggest number, and two countries had that. So my answer is actually Switzerland. If you ever get the chance to have chocolate from Switzerland, 
I highly suggest it. I got some in high school once from a teacher of mine. And then Germany, also I had chocolate in high school from Germany because I took German class. Also delicious. Oops, sorry guys. So Switzerland and Germany consume the most chocolate. So that is a table. So on your independent practice, you're gonna read a table. Here is what we would call our line plot. Remember the strategy I taught you when we first learned about this at school. Go through and label all of your points so that you have them nice and easy to read. It's a good strategy to help. So I label all my points. Tuesday, five. Okay. So we're talking about Claire's Cafe and the cups of coffee they're selling. So how many total cups of coffee were sold? If I'm doing total, again, I have to add them all up. So that means I'm going to add 4 plus 8 plus 6 plus 6 plus 3 plus 5. And then I know my answer is going to be cups. You can use friendly numbers when you add this. You can just start at 4, add 8, 6, 6, 3, 5, whatever's going to work for you. All right? I'm actually going to start with... 6 and 6 because I'm really comfortable with doubles. And I know 6 plus 6 is 12. So then I look and I see an 8. Well, I know 8 and 2 is 10. So I know 6 plus 6 is 12. Plus 8 is 20. So I'm done with those. And then I know if I take 20 plus 4, 24. I'm going to add 3 more to that, 27. And then I'm going to add 5 more to that and I'm going to get 32. Again, that's my strategy. If you want to start with 4 plus 8 and get 12, and then add 6 and get 18, and then add 6 more, do what works for you when you're adding, okay? How many more cups were sold on Friday than Monday? So if on Friday they sold 8 cups, and on Monday they sold 3, how do I figure out how many more? Well, I'm finding the difference, and hopefully that triggered you to say, up. Oh, Subtract, and 8 minus 3 is 5 cups. Next one. How many total cups were sold Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Oh, too far. So total for three days. So I need to take my Friday. I need to take my Saturday. And I need to take my Sunday. Again, I'm going to use those friendly numbers. I know 6 plus 6 is 12, and I know... 2 and 8 is 10, so if I have 2 of those, I'm going to have 20 cups. So you're going to do some line plots, then you're going to do a bar graph. This one is a double bar graph because we have two values in our key. We're looking at both girls and boys. Again, strategy. Label the tops of your bars to make it easier for you when you're doing the math. Elephants. Oh, there we go. All right. So we're looking at favorite zoo animals. And how many said an elephant? And it says children. So we know children means both the boys and the girls. So I need to take the girls plus the boys for elephant. And when I add those up, I'm going to get 80 plus 50 which should give you 130. And don't forget label, we're talking about children. How many total girls were surveyed? Okay, this one I'm gonna need a little more space for my work because I'm doing three numbers, right? Because we have three animals. So I'm gonna take that hippo number for the girls, the polar bears, and the elephants, and I'm gonna add them up. And I know zeros, just gonna give me a zero. And then eight plus three, 9, 10, 11, plus one more, it's going to give me 12. So that's going to be 120, and it's not children this time because we're talking specifically about the girls. All right, I'm going to move this work just a little to the side. Oops, sorry about that, guys. Remember, don't delete your work, just move it and shrink it. I can always zoom in. How many more children picked elephants than hippopotamuses? So in order to do that, I have to know how many hippopotamuses were picked. 
which 70 plus 10, that's, that's a pretty easy number just to do in my head, right? 70, add 10 more, I'm going to get 80. And the cool thing is we already did the total for elephants. That was our first question, so I don't have to really do much thinking on that. I just move it over there. Now I need to know how many more picked elephants than the hippo. So if I have 130 picked elephants minus 80 picked hippo, 0 minus 0 is 0, 3 minus 8, we're going to have to regroup 100 there. So we actually have 4, whoops, sorry, not 4, Mrs. Clary. We have 13 there. Sorry about that, guys. 13 minus 8 is going to give me 5, so I have 50 children. Okay, this is a frequency table. A frequency table. Tyler runs a mini golf course. On Saturday, he counted the colors of golf balls that customers chose. He recorded the colors in this chart. First thing I noticed about the chart, I have a question mark. So I need to figure what that value is. Luckily for me, number one says, if there were half as many red balls as blue, how many red balls were there? Well, blue says 20. What is half of 20? Or 20 divided by 2. And if I do my long division, I get 10. If you knew that already in your head, you don't need to do the long division. That's okay. You're just going to write 10 red balls. And also, I would encourage you, I'm going to shrink that down, put it with the problem. Write that on the table, too, your frequency table, so you have it to use. All right, how many customers used a blue, black, or green? So I need to take my blue, my black, and my green, and I'm going to put them together. 6 plus 1 plus 0 is 7. 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4. So I have 47. Label your units. Customers. Again, I'm going to shrink that work down. Notice how I'm not deleting my work. I'm just moving it. How many more blue balls were used than yellow? So if blue is 20 and yellow is 11, I need to find the difference. Again, 0 minus 1. We are not doing negatives in fourth grade. So I'm going to take a 10, regroup it. So now I have 10 minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. You can put the 0 there if you want, but it's not necessary. And I'm going to say 9 more. So you're also going to do a work, some work with a frequency table. Last thing you're going to do, mean, median, mode, and range. Remember mean. Step 1. Add them up. Step two, divide by how many? Mode, number we have the most of. Remember, that doesn't mean the biggest number. It's the number in the data set we see the most. Median, step one. Numerical order, again, remember that's biggest to smallest or smallest to biggest. It doesn't really matter. You choose. And then find the middle. And then the range, biggest number in the data set, minus smallest. All right, here we go. So, mean got to add them all up first. So I have 5, 4, 4, 6, 6. I'm going to use those friendly numbers. I know 6 plus 4 is 10, and I have two sets of that, so that's 20. Plus 5 gives me 25. Then I have to divide by how many are in the data set. 25 divided by 5. I know my skip count strategy. If I need to use it, I just skip to count down. And I, Well, there's 25, so I know there's five groups. So that means the mean of this data set is 5. Median numerical order, so 4, 4, 5, 6, 6. Find the middle, front, back, front, back, middle. Mode, when you look at that data set, do you see a number more than one time? Hopefully you said yes, I see 4 and 6 both more than one time, so you have two modes, 4 and 6. 
And then range, largest value minus smallest, six minus four is two. All right, guys, that concludes our final mini lesson for the fourth grade school year. You have been amazing. Make sure you take your notes, practice with me in the mini lesson, and then independent practice. Do your best. I will be available if you need to message me, email me, Canvas message me, however you need to. I am more than happy to help. Remember, Zoom sessions today. Miss Ellen is doing one at 10 o'clock to help. So she'll help with mini lesson or missing work. 12 o'clock, we're all going to get together, do one more fun Zoom session together. And then 2 o'clock, I'm available to help if you need help with math mini lesson today or any missing work, locating that. Remember, all missing work is due by Friday. So you have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to get it submitted. If you need additional help, Miss Ellen and I are here to help you. Please, please, please reach out to us, email us. We will happily set up a Zoom session with you as long as we don't already have another one going on. All right, guys, take care. Big hugs. I'll see you tomorrow for awards, and hopefully you will be out for the parade. All right, guys, take care.